you have a moment for us to talk about Russia Hello. and Ukraine? Yes, a few subjects that are known to us. Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, today we'll have a, again an important uh, d debate uh, here in the Council. And uh, two points that I would like to make. Uh, first of all, we need to be very clear-eyed about the situation in Ukraine. We do not need to wait for an attack, for a military attack. Uh, I can tell you that Ukraine is already under attack. First of all, economically, uh, its economic is already facing uh, uh, huge challenges that are not Ukrainian making. They were forced on Ukraine by, by Russia. To add to that, uh, the terror campaign, I have to imagine that the country is surrounded by a foreign army uh, with a threat on invasion, is already putting a lot of pressure uh, on, on, on Ukraine. Therefore, therefore, we have to be uh, very clear about this and start a discussion about how do we answer uh, this already happening attack. To add to that, uh, we have to talk about the situation in Belarus. Yesterday we've heard that the uh, Russian army is about to stay in Belarusian territory indefinitely. Uh, that indeed changes the situation not only for Ukraine or Belarus, but also for NATO and EU countries, namely Baltic states and Poland. Uh, therefore, we have to uh, admit that Belarus is... Uh, uh, what we're seeing is actually a very slow uh, occupation of uh, Belarusian territory and state. We think we have, uh, I think that we have to start uh, debating about uh, an answer already to a current situation. Because now everything that we are talking about is just waiting for military attack. But Russia has a huge arsenal of things that it can employ before actual military uh, attack. But why, why, why is there a cyber attack simulation? Can you explain why there is today, later, a cyber attack simulation? Why is this important? Uh, well, because what we're seeing, again, in, in Ukraine, uh, there's a huge increase in, in cyber activity, malicious cyber activity. That means that when I mentioned that uh, Ukraine is already under attack, cyber is one of the instruments that is being used. Therefore, not only we need to help Ukraine, but also we ourselves need to be very much prepared for that. Are you united about preventive sanctions? Because here we hear different ideas. What do you say? Look, it's, it's natural that uh, representatives from Baltic states usually are the first ones to, to speak out. You know, we uh, tend... I, I say, you know, we have a front row seat to the, to the whole situation. Therefore, we believe that the attack is already happening. Can I ask you, because this is very important, on Friday there were suggestions that some countries, including Italy, had said they worried about energy sanctions, that energy had to be put aside in this package. What do you make of that? Is it short-sighted? Is it actually playing into Putin's hands doing that? Well, I think that uh, Putin is not drawing any red lines for his attack. There, therefore, I don't think that we should be drawing any red lines for, for our sanctions. From our, from our perspective, our government has been, has been has given a, uh, a mandate for uh, that everything should be uh, should remain on the table. All the sanctions should be remain on the table. We just have to be very vigilant on what is happening. Uh, and currently, we should start talking about certain possibility of sanctions even now. And then, if if the attack continues, then we have to go further. Sir, can I follow up on that on Nord Stream? There's a lot of talk on Nord Stream two, but the Ukrainians say, why don't you just sanction Nord Stream one? operational already. Is that something that you would contemplate? Look, I mean, if we, if we talk about uh, stopping imports of all uh, energy uh, extracted materials to the European Union, that, in, that stops Nord Stream 1 as well. Lietuviškai, aš manau, kad tai, ką aš pasakau anksčiau, mano nuomonė Ukraina jau yra užpulta ir dėl to apie sankcijas turime pradėti kalbėti jau dabar, nelaukiant tos kitos karinės, karinės atakos ir taip pat reikia nepamiršti situacijos Baltarusijoje, kuri tikrai keičiasi dramatiškai po vakar. Baltarusija leidžia naudoti savo teritoriją kariniai, kariniam Rusijos veiksmam ir mes turime lygiai taip pat matyti ir kalbėti apie sankcijas Baltarusijai, Baltarusijos režimai. Well, diplomatic path is never is never closed. 
even when wars uh, happen, uh, diplomats still uh, retain the possibility of contact. But the aggressor has to show intention to withdraw. That is the main point. Now we're not seeing no intention, absolutely whatsoever intention, to, uh, to take its troops, take its tanks, take its equipment back where it's uh, permanently stationed. Well, nobody's ready for uh, for a war in the, in their heart. We have to first of all, we have to be ready uh, with our defense, uh, with our capacity to make decisions, and and all that. I'm uh, I'm quite convinced that uh, that my country is uh, is ready for that, but obviously nobody uh, nobody's nobody wishes for war. Food security is one of the problems, correct? Oh, sorry? The food security. Food security? Yeah, for, for Lithuania? For uh, everyone. Oh, maybe. I mean, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to count uh, what kind of disruptions could, could happen, but obviously there, there could be a lot of... Counting 40% of the food from Lithuania and Russia. Yes, that could be a problem, absolutely. Well, we, I think as a European Union, we need to find ways to help those who are uh, affected. But first of all, we need to help Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you.